Shenzhen yet. I mean Songkho, a small town in major municipality of Guangdong province. During the 19th century to the early 20th century, there was a wave of Hakka migrating to Southeast Asia. A large portion of them boarded the ship at this dock and started their journey from here. Today, let's visit the starting point of Hakka's long journey. Songkho town is by the Mei River, which flows through Meizhou. It used to be the easternmost town of Meizhou along the Mei River. Let's take a look at the map. Songkho town is here, in the Meixian district. Songkho, including the villages belonging to Songkho, was on the eastern border of Meizhou. From Qin Dynasty to early 20th century, Hakka from different places in Meizhou had to first make it to Songkho and boarded the boats to the coastal ports from the town. Today, Songkho is not on the eastern border of Meizhou anymore. Meizhou expanded east after Dapu County was merged in Meizhou in 1949. This is a steamer boat. Steamer boats were widely used in water transportation in China. This dock was named Dock of Steamer Boat. It was not the only dock in Songkho. According to historical records, there were 29 docks spreading along the river bank. During the peak of prosperity, over 600 boats were berthed here overnight. That peak of prosperity was reached in the early 20th century. In 1931, a hotel was built right facing the dock of steamer boat. It was built by an overseas Hakka in Indonesia whose family was from Songkho. Hotel Songjiang was the most luxurious hotel in Meizhou prior to 1950s and was a landmark of Songkho. The name of the street is the Prosperous Street and it used to be the most prosperous street in town. The buildings on the street was mostly constructed in the 1930s by overseas Hakka, therefore they look quite different from the traditional Hakka style, but similar to those in Southeast Asia. Started migrating to Southeast Asia around the mid 19th century. In the early 20th century, many of the second, third, or even fourth generation abroad have accumulated a large amount of fortune. Those with business mind realized Songkho was a good place for investments. It was not only a town for Hakka to transfer and travel abroad, but also the second largest river port in Guangdong province. Products from South Jiangxi Province and North Guangdong Province were traded here and shipped to the coastal city Shantou. Trade attracted people and people created business opportunities. Sensing the business opportunities, overseas Hakka invested in real estate and commerce. They built buildings in the town for renting. Some of them were directly involved in business in the town. This was a department store. Back in the 1930s, few cities in China had such a big department store. This was Hotel Songkho. It was not as luxurious as Hotel Songjiang, but it was also a popular hotel. With luxurious hotels, big department stores, restaurants, Songkho was the little Shanghai in the 1930s.
Overseas Hacker also sponsored to build a bridge over the main river to facilitate those living in the villages in the southern shore of the river to go to the town. The name of the bridge is Meidong Bridge, which indicated its location in East Meizhou. This road dates back to around 1770 and was built by a rich family in the town. Songkho is an ancient town with a history of a thousand years. Thanks to its location, it had always been a regional commercial center and attracted many to live here to engage in trade. Therefore, it's not a place with one or two big clans. Instead, population in Songkho have over 120 different surnames. Hakai in Songkho had a long history of migrating abroad. Every family had relatives or connections abroad. In 2014, Dex King Shinawacha and his sister, both the former Prime Minister of Thailand, visit the ancestral house of their maternal grandparents in Songkho. Their mother returned to the village and stayed in this house for a few years during the Second World War. They still have relatives in the village. to Southeast Asia. This is the School of Immigrants. A monument was erected in the center of the school by UNESCO in commemorate of those Chinese workers who migrated to the islands in the Indian Ocean. It is part of UNESCO's Chinese diaspora route in the Indian Ocean program. Similar monuments were also erected in Madagascar, Reunion, Mozambique, Mauritius, and the Comoros. The program chose Meijo as the origin of the overseas Chinese in the islands of the Indian Ocean. Specifically, Songkho was chosen as the place to erect the monument. On the note of the 25 rupee of Mauritius is the photo of a second generation Hakka from Meijo. He was appointed the Minister of Finance after the independence of the country. Today, 90% of the 30,000 Chinese in Mauritius are Hakka, and their ancestors were from Meijou. No wonder Songkho was chosen as the place to erect the monument. While I was editing this video, I got a comment in one of my earlier videos. Hakka, Mauritius, Meijou. Thank you for sharing the story. I read all of your stories in the comments. I learned as much through the stories in the comments as I learned from my Hakka culture trip. Overseas Hakka are mainly in Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, etc. Here is some information about Hakka in Indonesia provided by viewers in the comment of my earlier video. Again, thanks for sharing the information. From Indonesia, which was Dutch colony, the Dutch recruited Hakka workers to their other colonies, so some Hakka ended up in Suriname. A few generations later, some moved from Indonesia and Suriname to the Netherlands. Hakka also migrated to Caribbeans to work in sugar and cocoa plantations. They are in Cuba, Jamaica, Trinda and Tobacco, Guyana, etc. Today, Hakka all over the world. Overseas Hakka mostly came from three regions in China. Huizhou and the Shenzhen region due to their proximity to Hong Kong. Meizhou region due to the accessibility to Shantou via the Meihan Waterway. The third one is Yongding in Fujian province and a small portion of adjacent region in Zhangzhou. This region had access to both Xiamen and Shantou via different waterways. 
The majority of this haka came from Meizhou, especially if those from Dabu County are also included. This building was converted into a museum about overseas haka, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was closed during my visit. It's okay, I visit a similar museum in Meizhou City. Many overseas haka donated their goods to the museum for people to learn and to remember this part of history. Flat iron used by haka in Indonesia, tools used in rubber plantation in Thailand, coffee grinder and cups used by haka in Reunion, a badge from Chinese opera troupe in Myanmar, and their performance dress. Porcelain products with Chinese characters donated by Hakka in Indonesia. I think the most precious items are the letters overseas Hakka sent to their relatives back home. This one was to mom, this one was to brother. These are the ones from Batavia, which is today's Jakarta, to Bingcun in Meijo. This one was sent to Dabu County. They were not just the letters, along the letters were rewritten. The first generation overseas Hakka usually worked as tailors, barbers, or contract workers in different plantations. They didn't splurge the money they made. They sent the hard-earned money home, and those at home heavily relied on the remittance. In Songkho, a type of cake that Hakka brought during their journey to Southeast Asia is still sold in the town. This is the cake that Hakka brought uh, during the trip to Southeast Asia because they're dry and easy to keep for a long time. It's very typical Han Chinese food, especially in North China. Honestly, I don't like the taste of the cakes. I just didn't dare to say that out in the store. But taste was not important and not relevant. The cakes made sure those Hakka wouldn't starve during the journey. With the cakes, they boarded the steamer boats. They would arrive in the Sanhe town in Dabu County, where the main river converges into the Han River. The ships would navigate along the Han River. Twelve hours after they left Songkong, those on board would see a bridge. Chaozhou, and I still have the cakes. The bridge behind me should be in the memory of most overseas Hakka from Meizhou because they had to pass it before reaching the ocean, and they had to do it again on their way back. This bridge built in the 12th century is the icon of Chaozhou. The central part of the bridge is made of 18 vessels that could be removed. That's how ships pass the bridge. Early 20th century, ships. This was where ships with Chaoshan people and Hakka people entered the ocean. I also brought the cakes to Shantou. It had been over half a year after I bought them in Songkou, and it looked like 
they were still good to eat. In next video, let's visit the city Shantou together. The streets in the city look very similar to the ones in Songkhao. In fact, Hakka's migration to Southeast Asia and the prosperity of Songkhao were highly related to the opening of Shantong Port. Who organized the recruitment of Chinese workers during this period? How were Hakka involved in the development of the city? You'll find the answers in the next video. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sets of interests in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.